Hello and welcome to Chapter 3, Chapter 3 Project Management of our Express course for SEMA E2 Enterprise Management. So what we're talking about within this chapter is all about projects and project management. First of all, if you look at the bottom of the page, bottom of page 16, what do we mean by project? What is a project? Well, first of all, it's different to ongoing work. It's different to the, the normal ongoing work because a project has a clear beginning, a middle, and an end. So importantly, project, beginning, middle, and an end. And if we go down to page 17, page 17 of our notes, and here we have what is known as a project life cycle. So it's the life cycle of a project. And on the diagram here we have time on this axis and effort there. So the various stages that we go through. As time develops, we start with identifying the need. So the first stage of the project life cycle is identifying that there's a need there. The amount of effort is relatively low. The second stage, we look at developing a solution to whatever that need was. And again, time is going by, but the amount of effort is increasing. Once we've developed the solution, we actually undertake and perform the project. And obviously when we start performing the project, that's when the amount of effort increases. So the highest level of effort during the stage where we're performing the project. And then the final stage when we come to completion of the project is complete the project. Furthest down the timeline and the amount of effort drops down. So this is um, project life cycle. It's quite useful because it identifies these four different stages and it almost highlights that the the amount of effort is in the performing the project stage okay then the bottom half of this page the pinbook guide pinbook originates from project management body of knowledge pinbook guide published by the PMI, the Project Management Institute, and the guide identifies processes. So it's talking about different processes to various project management, and those processes fall into five groups and nine knowledge areas. Now the five groups, the five process groups are initiating, planning, executing, monitoring and controlling, and closing. So these are the big sort of project process groups. Initiating, planning, executing, so actually doing it, monitoring and controlling it, and closing. Okay, what about the knowledge areas? Now, we've got the nine knowledge areas, project integration management, project scope, project time management, cost management, quality management, human resource management, communications management, risk management, and procurement management. So this identifies the nine knowledge areas within the Puppenbock. Another approach, we have the 4D model, known as the appreciative inquiry and and this model is often used in creative projects in more creative projects and the the whole argument behind this is that they've got the view that any organization that inquires into problems will keep on finding more of the same whereas if you focus on what it is good at you'll discover more of what it is good at and as I mentioned a moment ago, often used in creative projects. So it's referred to as the 4D model because we have first stage, discover. So D for discover, identify processes that work well. Second D, dream. 
what could work well in the future. Third stage, D for design, and that's designing, planning the processing. And then number four, the fourth D is deliver. So the first stage, D for discover, second one, dream what could work well, third is design, and fourth is deliver. Okay, moving down to page 19. Now this model is the McKinsey 7S, McKinsey 7S model, developed by Peters and Waterman, and some of you may well recognise the names in terms of they wrote the management classic in search of excellence. The core idea behind the McKinsey 7S model is that there are seven internal aspects of an organization. So seven internal aspects of an organization that ideally should all be aligned with each other to maximize the chances of an organization being successful. So I'll let you read through this in your own time but as the name suggests there are seven items that begin with S. Structure, system, style, shared value, strategy, skills and staff. And remember, the core idea behind this is that all of these internal aspects should be aligned with one another. And there's also a classification where these three here are known as the hard components, the hard elements. The four at the bottom are known as soft elements and that the distinction really is that the hard elements can be influenced by management so management can influence the structures the systems that are in place and the strategy the soft elements on the other hand tend to be more difficult to describe what for example is within shared values. It can be more difficult to describe. Okay, now that finishes this video in terms of a quick run through of chapter three. Thank you very much for listening.